Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into A Crack in Creation, a groundbreaking work co authored by renowned scientists Jennifer A. Doudna and Samuel H. Sternberg. This book unfolds the incredible potential of CRISPR, the revolutionary gene editing technology poised to fundamentally transform the biosciences. Jennifer A. Doudna, a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, is a trailblazer in CRISPR biology and genome engineering, while Samuel H. Sternberg, an accomplished biochemist, brings his expertise and scientific acclaim to the narrative. Together, they guide us through the intricate scientific processes behind gene editing and probe the profound medical advancements it enables. Beyond the science, a crack in creation also confronts the ethical dilemmas that arise from this capacity to alter the fabric of life itself. This book is a must-read for biologists, chemists, natural scientists, and anyone with a keen interest in the future trajectory of medical science. It also serves as a thought-provoking exploration for philosophers and ethicists engrossed in the moral considerations of gene editing. Join us as we explore the possibilities and challenges presented by this remarkable leap forward in our ability to rewrite the code of life. A crack in creation, gene editing, and the unthinkable power to control evolution. Introduction. Discover the dual-edged sword of gene editing. Embark on an enlightening journey into a realm where the very blueprint of life is at our fingertips the realm of gene editing. Picture a future where maladies that have plagued humanity for centuries are vanquished with precision, where the intricate coding of DNA can be meticulously rewritten to erase the errors that lead to ailments such as genetic disorders, HIV, or even cancer. The promise of gene editing is not a distant dream conjured up by science fiction, but a reality taking shape before our eyes suggesting we might be the fortunate witnesses to a revolutionary turning point in medical history. However, the power to rewrite DNA does not come without profound implications. As with the creation of the atomic bomb, gene editing carries the weight of tremendous responsibilities and risks. Imagine parents sifting through a catalog of premium genetic traits, selecting enhanced muscles or superior intellect for their progeny, cultivating designer babies. The prospect teeters between medical marvel and ethical conundrum. The science fiction of yesterday could be the ethical dilemma of tomorrow. As gene editing techniques like CRISPR move from the laboratory into real-world applications, we're faced with questions that challenge the fabric of society itself. Decisions loom on the horizon about using these technologies and our choices will shape the future of our species. What will we decide is permissible in pursuit of perfection? Today we'll unlock the secrets of CRISPR, a game changer in genetic engineering, explore how gene editing could become humanity's ally in securing the food supply, and contemplate the moral complexities that led one author to take a stand against a pioneering yet controversial designer baby enterprise. Part 1. Nature's Own Hand. At genetic tinkering sets the stage for human intervention. Deep within the fabric of life, nature has been the first and foremost genetic editor, sculpting the evolutionary artistry that surrounds us. For eons, random variations in genetic codes have naturally occurred, sculpting the rich tapestry of life, while Darwin's celebrated theory of evolution helped us understand how species adapt and survive. Yet, with humankind's insatiable curiosity and innovation, we're turning prehistoric pages to author a new chapter in evolution, one where intentional genetic modifications are actualized by human hands. Jennifer Doudna, a significant figure in the scientific community, has been instrumental in understanding how rational and targeted adjustments to the genetic sequence can be made without relying on the slow tendrils of natural evolution. The concept of deliberate genetic modification might bear the futuristic sheen of the unknown, but it's not as alien to nature as one might assume. Case in point, 
the remarkable natural phenomenon that freed a patient from her genetic affliction. Back in 2013, a patient named Kim had scientists at the National Institutes of Health scratching their heads. Diagnosed with a rare genetic disorder known as WIM syndrome, Kim's condition was rooted in a tiny error in her DNA script. Decades later, in an extraordinary twist, Kim's symptoms vanished. Puzzled, scientists investigated further and uncovered that a massive segment of her genetic code, some 35 million letters, had been lost, with the remaining DNA jumbled in chaos. This event, chromothripsis, a spontaneous chromosome shattering, had inadvertently corrected the genetic typo that was the source of Kim's suffering. Kim's unintentional genetic rewrite begs a profound question. What if we could harness the power to make such precise edits ourselves, correcting genetic errors at will to conquer disorders? As we continue on this scientific journey, that once hypothetical query gives rise to enthralling possibilities and brave new frontiers in the pursuit of curing genetic diseases. Join us as we delve deeper into the history and progress of gene editing, unraveling the essence of this transformative line of scientific inquiry. Part 2. The Monumental Shift from Genetic Improbability to Practicality The cosmos of genetic science is brimming with complex terms and intricate processes, but before we can grasp the revolutionary strides taken in gene editing, it's essential to familiarize ourselves with the basic structures at play. Picture the genome as the grand library of a cell, housing the entire compendium of genetic scripts that dictate everything from the shade of our eyes to our vulnerability to certain illnesses. This repository is composed of the molecule DNA, structured with four fundamental chemical units, adenine, A, guanine, G, cytosine, C, and thymine, T, the alphabet of life itself. Nestled within this genome are chromosomes, akin to volumes in our library, which segment further into genes focused passages within the volumes that guide the cell's function and orchestration. Armed with this knowledge, we turn to the saga of gene editing, a quest that originated from the observation of viruses inserting genetic material into host cells. It was a natural marvel that led to a scientific epiphany. Nature itself could intertwine alien genomes with bacterial chromosomes, and perhaps so could we. Fast forward through decades marked by ambition, the 1980s heralded a breakthrough by Mario Capecchi and Oliver Smithies. They achieved what many thought impossible, the precise modification of DNA via homologous recombination. However, their success was overshadowed by its rarity, akin to finding a diamond in a vast desert. The journey continued across the 90s and early 2000s, with more methods surfacing, yet all were eclipsed by their sheer complexity and impracticality. Then, like a beacon in the genetic fog, CRISPR, clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats, emerged, a peculiar pattern within bacterial DNA that opened doors to simplicity and efficacy in gene editing. This concept of a DNA sequence replicating itself methodically, interval after interval, was the precursor to CRISPR technology a tool that could transcend lab benches and step into the realm of practical application. This revelation was on the cusp of not only advancing science, but also revolutionizing medicine as we know it. Part 3. CRISPR. Nature's own DNA scalpel comes into the scientific limelight. What started as a peculiar pattern in bacterial genetics, those mysterious CRISPR sequences, gradually unfurled to reveal a natural tool of astonishing potential. These CRISPR regions, with their repetitive sequences interspersed by unique spacer sequences, hinted at a biological purpose far greater than random genetic fluff. Scientists' curiosity peaked when they observed a striking resemblance between these spacers and the genetic code of viruses that attack bacteria. The implications were tantalizing. Could these CRISPRs be a linchpin in bacterial defense against viral assaults? Indeed, as the mid-2000s research unfolded, it became clear that CRISPRs 
were akin to molecular immune records, a system allowing bacteria to recall and counterstrike against familiar viral foes. These genetic archives facilitated bacteria's survival, essentially by hacking the viral code. The CRISPR arsenal relies on a trio of components. First, the CRISPR-associated Cas genes, nestled close to the repeating DNA sequences, play their part in the bacteria's immune response, particularly the Cas9 gene, the source code for a precision DNA scalpel protein. Next up, CRISPR RNA. Much like a guided missile system's targeting coordinates, it directs the Cas9 protein to its exact genetic target for a strategic strike. Lastly, the tracker RNA. Think of it as the co-pilot assisting the CRISPR RNA in steering the Cas9 protein into action, ensuring the viral DNA is cut and disabled at the precise location. With these insights, a bold question ignited the imaginations of researchers. If bacteria can leverage CRISPR to snip away at viral DNA, could these mechanisms be co-opted, refined, and utilized in laboratories worldwide to edit DNA at will? This breakthrough struck the scientific community like lightning, illuminating the path to a future where gene editing might not just be possible, but practical, precise, and revolutionary. As the wheels began turning, researchers stood on the precipice of a new era, with the power to rewrite life's code in their hands. Part 4. A Revolutionary Tool Emerges CRISPR's Leap from Concept to Medical Marvel CRISPR, a once arcane term privy only to geneticists, has now been cast into the scientific spotlight, manifesting as a groundbreaking toolkit for genetic manipulation. But let's simplify the complexity for a moment. Imagine CRISPR RNA as a meticulous guide, leading the Cas9 protein, an adept genetic scalpel, to an exact DNA address matching one of those unique spaces within the CRISPR system. Upon arrival, the Cas9 makes a clean cut, removing a precise segment. In the wake of this surgical snip, the cell's inherent repair mechanisms rush in, Yet before the DNA has a chance to stitch itself back together, researchers can intervene, inserting an alternative DNA sequence into the breach. This is gene editing, wielded with newfound precision and ease through CRISPR. It was Jennifer Doudna, along with Emmanuel Charpentier, who unveiled the full potential of this method. In their landmark 2012 publication in Science, they not only demonstrated CRISPR's scalpel like precision, but also its user-friendly nature and cost-effectiveness. This one-two punch, groundbreaking capability coupled with accessibility, sent ripples through the scientific community, sparking a flame of excitement and a torrent of further studies. Soon after, in 2013, Harvard's Kiran Musunuru leveraged CRISPR to tackle sickle cell anemia. This debilitating disease, tied to a minor but critical genetic typo, had been recreated and corrected within laboratory conditions using the CRISPR technique. The implications were staggering. We now had a tool that could theoretically rewrite the genetic woes of humanity. In the eyes of genetic researchers everywhere, CRISPR was no less than alchemical gold, a veritable philosopher's stone for the modern age of medicine. Part 5. From Farm to Fork, the Agrarian Revolution via Gene Editing Imagine if the limits of agricultural innovation were bound only by scientists' creativity, where genetic engineering isn't about conjuring mythical creatures, but instead focuses on more pragmatic applications that could redefine the food industry. That's precisely the reality the CRISPR gene editing method promises, presenting the power not to create the fantastical, but to enhance the tangible that feeds the world. The power to sculpt the genetic canvas of agriculture carries with it the hope of safeguarding food security and nourishment. Picture citrus groves, once teeming with life, now withering under the onslaught of Huanglongbing, a devastating bacterial malady. Here, CRISPR stands as a champion of preservation, offering a solution that could protect and heal these vital crops from a seemingly intractable disease 
currently ravaging regions from Asia to America's own sun-kissed orchards. But the utility of gene editing extends beyond salvation from blight. It paves the way for nutritional enhancement. Consider the ubiquitous soybean, a staple yielding oil found in kitchens everywhere, yet lamentably rich in trans fats. With a few precise tweaks through CRISPR, these fatty contents could be scaled down, turning a common but unhealthy ingredient into a heart-friendly option. The scope of CRISPR's applications knows no bounds, even extending to the beings that graze our lands. Take the Enviropig, for example, born from the union of pig and bacterial genetics. Through gene editing, this swine sports improved digestive prowess, resulting in significantly cleaner manure. A minor edit with major environmental implications for our waterways. Cattle, too, stand to gain from this innovate or rewrite approach. Farmers often resort to the painful removal of horns for safety and logistic reasons, but imagine a breed of cattle designed hornless from inception, spared from this agony. Gene editing unlocks this very possibility, showcasing a future where the welfare of livestock needn't be compromised for agricultural practice. The CRISPR toolkit, once envisioned as a key to medical advancements, now emerges as a beacon of hope and progress for the agricultural domain, promising an era of healthier, more sustainable, and compassionate farming. Part 6. CRISPR's Transformative Impact on the Future of Healthcare Medical textbooks teem with over 7,000 diseases, each one stemming from a single genetic anomaly, a sobering truth indicating just how pivotal a single letter in the genetic alphabet can be. Fortunately, with CRISPR now sharpening the edges of gene editing, the prospect of crafting cures for a myriad of these conditions gleams on the horizon, potentially igniting a revolution in personalized therapy. Take HIV, for instance, a globally pervasive virus, insidious and indiscriminate, yet startlingly, not all are equally vulnerable. Some individuals carry a rare genetic mutation within their CCR5 gene that bestows natural immunity to HIV. Presently, focused research aims to deploy CRISPR to engineer this same mutation into those without this fortuitous genetic shield, crafting a bulwark against HIV before it can take hold. Then there's the heart-wrenching narrative of boys born with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, DMD a cruel genetic lottery where dystrophin, the protein crucial for muscle integrity, goes missing, condemning them to a childhood marred by weakening limbs. But again, CRISPR offers a beacon of hope. Experiments on mice herald the possibility of restoring this missing protein, suggesting that a rewriting of their genetic destinies could be within reach. And cancer, a tapestry of diseases woven from the thread of DNA errors, might find its nemesis in CRISPR, whether passed down through generations or insidiously acquired through lifestyle choices, these aberrations in our genetic fabric can trigger the onset of malignancies. By excising these faulty strings, CRISPR holds the ambitious potential to not just treat, but prevent the scourge of cancer. Yet, for all its envisioned miracles, the power to direct our own evolutionary journey comes laden with risks as profound as the opportunities. The question is not merely can we, but should we, and what safeguards must we install to navigate such power responsibly? As we ponder the boundless prospects of gene editing, we must also grapple with the ethical and safety implications that accompany our newfound dominion over the genetic code. Part 7. Navigating the Moral Labyrinth of Gene Editing as the world began to wake up to the extraordinary potential of CRISPR in 2014, the public imagination was abuzz with its prospects. But as one entrepreneur's proposition of a CRISPR baby to the co-author Samuel Sternberg highlighted, this scientific leap forward brought with it a Pandora's box of ethical concerns. What depths had gene editing plumbed too quickly, and what moral quagmires awaited amidst its applications? Use CRISPR, and we might save countless lives from genetic maladies. But what about transcending the boundary of health into the realm of human augmentation? What are the moral contours of selecting traits for our offspring, 
from their physical attributes to predetermined aptitudes? The slope from healing to perfecting humankind is slippery and fraught with profound ethical implications, haunted by visions of a dystopian misuse, personified in a nightmarish dream encounter with Adolf Hitler, no less. The author's concerns about her breakthrough being harnessed for nefarious purposes were palpable. Could CRISPR, in the wrong hands, be used to engineer a populace tailored to the horrific ideologies of a despot? These are not merely hypothetical musings, but urgent questions demanding collective introspection and dialogue. In her quest to drive this conversation, the author, along with other leading minds, issued a stark white paper in 2015 calling for reasoned pause and deliberation, specifically tackling germline gene editing, that which could alter the very genetic heritage passed to future generations. The paper implored the scientific community to hold its collective breath, to consider the weighty ethical, societal, and philosophical questions at stake. For CRISPR's journey forward is not one for scientists alone to navigate. It is a path that society must tread together. The decisions on gene editing's bounds and uses necessitate a well-informed public discourse, an educational imperative to understand and engage with the potential and the peril of this potent new power over life's blueprint. Part 8. Charting the Responsible Course for Gene Editing's Tomorrow As we peer into the future of gene editing, the horizon gleams with both promise and pitfalls. The diversity in viewpoints and approaches underscores the complexity of this groundbreaking territory. While institutions like the National Institutes of Health echo the Obama administration's caution with a hold on editing human embryos, there are voices in the scientific wilderness advocating for an assertive march onward. In the author's perspective, the path forward is marked by three beacons, the concerns of safety, the questions of ethics, and the need for regulation. When it comes to safety, the outlook is optimistic. The inevitability of natural genetic mutations, occurring at an astounding rate each second within our bodies, suggests that the risks posed by the off-target influence of CRISPR might be relative. The potential to eradicate genes responsible for disease weighed against these naturally occurring mutations suggests that the risks might well justify the leap toward germline editing once deemed clinically safe. However, safety is but one facet of a multidimensional debate. The ethical considerations loom large as we stand on the threshold of not just curing, but enhancing. Where do we draw the line between healing and augmenting human capabilities? The possibility of market-driven genetic enhancements exclusively accessible to the wealthy, opens the doors to unprecedented inequality and to a future where one's genetic endowment might amplify societal divides. Yet in recognizing such hazards, we shouldn't rush to embargo all avenues of germline editing. The key lies instead in finding a balance that embraces the beneficial while shunning the perilous. Regulation emerges as the final and perhaps most complex challenge. Governments, as stewards of the public interest, must play a decisive role in tempering the advances of gene editing within ethical and societal acceptability. An ideal scenario envisions a global consensus, a united front in policy and implementation, fostering a safe and equitable framework for gene editing. With dialogues already underway, such as the pivotal 2015 International Summit on Human Gene Editing, The seeds for these critical discussions have been sown. As the world turns its gaze to the unfolding narrative of gene editing, such platforms burgeon in importance, setting the stage for deliberation and consensus on how best to harness this powerful but contentious tool of science. Final summary. As we stand on the cusp of a new era in human evolution, empowered by the revolutionary tool called CRISPR, the chapters of nature's own genetic editing serve as both precedent and caution. We can, with unprecedented precision, splice and rewrite the essence of life, our genome, the ramifications of which stretch beyond the confines of science 
into the moral and societal fabric. The ability to dictate the genetic makeup of future generations places us at a pivotal crossroads. We are faced with opportunities to eradicate disease, bolster food security, and enhance quality of life. Yet, it also presents a maze of ethical dilemmas, from the definition of normalcy to the potential for exacerbating social inequities. As we grapple with these profound choices, it is incumbent upon us to tread thoughtfully, weighing the monumental benefits against potential misuse. The responsibility now falls on a global collective of scientists, ethicists, policymakers, and society at large to engage in nuanced dialogue and establish guardrails that will shepherd CRISPR's use for the betterment of humanity. Our final judgment on gene editing will echo for generations to come, marking either a triumph of human innovation or a cautionary tale in the annals of scientific history. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.